Hi, this is Peter with Side Effects, and today we're going to be talking about the Feather Deintersect node. So this node allows you to take uh, your setups with different Feather configurations and be able to make sure that there is no uh, intersecting geometry with your feathers uh, based on their thickness and shape, things like that. Um, and it also allows for you to have some really specific control over the actual layering that's happening um, and where the neighboring uh, feathers are that you reference uh, in the feather deintersect process. So let's take a look at how this works. So I have a switch here uh, that's going to allow me to take a look at two different feather setups. Uh, first, let's just look at this really simple three feather setup. Uh, so here, if we take a look at this and we look at our attributes, we have normal uh, condensed feathers here with uh, just curve with points where the barbs are being drawn on the GPU. Um, and if we look over at the primitives, we can see that we've given these a layer attribute, uh, which will help with uh, knowing how to layer these on top of each other. So uh, let's come down to the feather deintersect and see what happens. Now, this this node is is relatively quick. Uh, it's OpenCL um, uh, accelerated, so it's able to do a lot of uh, processing pretty quickly. So what I've done here is uh, we have a few different modes. Uh, I have this set in the layer attribute mode, but we can set it to automatic. In this case, we don't need to have um, we don't need to have the uh, layering attribute present here. We can use some some things like the search radius, uh, the cone angle to the side where where uh, primitives uh, where other feather primitives exist. Um, we can use the position attribute. Um, P to be able to figure out how they're side layering. So we can um, do that along the uh, X axis. And in this case, we can reverse it, you know, so we're using P uh, to figure out how these layer on top of each other. And so when we do reverse, we're going now in uh, the negative X component of P uh, to be able to get that. So you can, you could kind of control this however you might want to, if one of these, um, if one of these axes is is better for the way that you feel the layering should be, like say we had stuff going along the, uh, in this case, the negative X axis, and we wanted to lay on top of each other that way, uh, you could certainly do that as well. Um, the other thing we could do is a direction attribute and give it a uh, a directional uh, you know a directional vector to to know where these should be laying. But uh, we haven't added that here, so this isn't going to know uh, have that that attribute to know how to layer these. So we'll just leave that on position for right now in the automatic mode. So um, another thing to note here is that this feather geometry down at the bottom. This is actually the feather geometry that the the processing is being done on. Uh, we still have all of these points, regardless of how we turn down the segment counts. So this is just saying we're going to reduce the feather geometry to these uh, shaft segment, barb segments, um, and barb segments down here as well. Um, whether it's you know the barb segments along the shaft, that's what we're talking about here, or the barb segments across away from the shaft, that's these barb segments here. So this will allow you to um, control how that's being set up and um, kind of lower the resolution so there's not as much geometry that we need to calculate this process over. And it works pretty much just as well as with the high resolution. So uh, you can turn this off. Uh, it will go a bit slower, but um, you can see that we get more or less the same results. And it's actually pretty, it's actually a little bit smoother, honestly, to do it uh, without that. You can also set the thickness of your feather geometry here uh, just to, you know, to make sure that you're giving it the thickness uh, separation that you need. So let's show a little bit of how this works. So what I have here is a node that just selects uh, the ID number one feather, which is in the middle. And we're just going to transform this around and see exactly how this works. So if we take this and move it around, we can see that this will now uh, kind of control the layering here. And, and it, it has the layering built in. So it wants to slide under this green one and over this purple one at all times. So um, there's going to be a point at which it won't find that anymore, and um, it'll just kind of snap back. So you can see here we can kind of do a whole bunch of different things with this. We can turn it uh, in any different way, and it'll try to keep those uh, feathers kind of set uh, in their position in their stacking order. So that's a pretty simplistic uh, explanation, but let's take a look at something a bit more complicated. Uh, if we look at this feather configuration here, and if we, we can see that this is noised up and it's really pretty messy. Uh, there's a lot of weird intersections going on here, and it seem, seems like this would be a pretty tricky thing to do. But as we come down here, you can see that this is done quite quickly. We get some really nice results from this. Um, we, can, we can certainly uh, do more iterations if we feel that we need to, like there's a little a little cut there. Um, you can also do some smoothing iterations if that benefits you and relaxation iterations here as well. Um, the other thing we can do here is we can set up something like our layer attribute. So both of these have layering on them, right? 
And so um, this has the layer attribute set here. Um, the three feathers have their layer attribute set as well. So these attributes will tell it how to actually stack on top of it. So um, in this case, um, all of my feathers, uh, you know, have been set up using these um, these networks here. You can take a look at those if you'd like to. Uh, it doesn't really matter how this is being created, but it's there for your reference. Um, and so you can see how quickly this this kind of deintersects. It makes sure all this noisy um, feathers kind of all lay on top of each other really nicely. Uh, you'll get a slightly different um, result if you're using the automatic. Uh, this is just trying to find its own neighbors. Uh, in the layer attribute, I've actually set that up um, with the um, with the layer order that I wanted. So it just kind of reverses it a little bit. Um, and finally, there is also this neighbor arrays um, feature. Uh, and you can set what the front neighbors and the rear neighbors are going to be. Uh, this is obviously the most kind of detailed and granular control that you can get. So it's just looking for uh, array attributes of the front neighbors and rear neighbors so that it knows where to look for those um, and figure out how to lay those on top of each other. Uh, so this is generally how the uh, the Feather Deaner Sec node works. Uh, it's pretty quick and should be able to give you a nice clean result. So uh, hopefully this helps you understand a little bit of how it works and where this might fit into your workflows. Thanks so much for watching.